I have this personal policy where if I'm writing a response to a Facebook argument and I have to say to myself and another thing more than twice, I stop and I ask myself, hey, man, is this a diatribe? And in this case, the answer is yes. So first, let me summarize the Facebook argument that I was wading into. The question at hand was whether there's such a thing as a harmless, irrational belief. And I feel like you already know which side of this debate I'm going to fall on. But there's a person on the thread that identifies as a deist, and appropriately enough, they're on the side of irrationality. See, by their argument, a belief doesn't become bad simply by being irrational. The belief has to like reliably lead people to harmful behavior before you can actually take issue with it. And of course, implicit in the argument is the idea that being irrational doesn't count as harmful. Now, this assertion gets a bit of pushback from a person who says flatly that all irrational beliefs are harmful. It's a private group, so I don't want to attribute the quote, but I'm going to read a piece of the response to that verbatim. The, the deist response in part, quote, I really don't think all irrational belief is harmful. The belief that seeing a shooting star brings good luck is absolutely harmless, for example. If you imply that irrational belief always leads to harmful thoughts or behaviors, that's a slippery slope argument, end quote. So first of all, quick correction on the logical fallacy there. That's not what a slippery slope argument is. A slippery slope argument is A could lead to B and B is bad, therefore A is bad. But if A will lead to B and B is bad, then, then you're talking about a consequence, not a slippery slope. What's more, slippery slope is an informal logical fallacy, meaning it's not evidence that the person using it is wrong. Appeal to authority is an informal logical fallacy, but also the correct way of thinking most of the time, right? But that's a minor point, certainly not worth its own diatribe. The larger issue is with the example of a benign, irrational belief that this person chose. See, the, the only reason that one can even make the assertion that believing a shooting star brings good luck isn't bad is because nobody actually believes that. If you spent a few minutes just contemplating a world where that's not just like, you know, a fun little superstition that we all play along with, but an actual belief, like a religious belief, it's terrifying. I mean, consider this. Consider what you would have to do if you actually thought that seeing a meteor enter the atmosphere had some material effect on your fortune. I mean, I feel like at the very least, you'd be sleep deprived and have a permanently stiff neck, right? I mean, it would depend on how much cosmic serendipity each shooting star contained, of course. But if it's any noticeable amount, you'd be crazy not to move to a dark sky area, drive around to a clear area every evening, and then spend all night staring up into the sky, no? Hell, assuming shit like having a healthy kid and mom recovering from her hip surgery are under the purview of your luck, you'd have a moral obligation to do that. And one way or the other, you'd have a moral obligation to convince mom and your kid to do it, right? And, and, and what of all the various things that you'd be neglecting that actually could improve your situation in life, right? And no belief can exist without sacrifice. And, and what about the false confidence you might have after the Leonids? False beliefs necessarily lead to uninformed actions, after all. And even if you could rein in all the potential excesses of such an unjustified belief, what about all the people more inclined to take it too far that you'd be encouraging with your endorsement? But none of that touches on the real problem here, which is that no belief exists in a vacuum. See, for you to believe that a meteor gives you good luck, you have to believe in luck. Not just in terms of fortunate happenstance, but like... Luck is a quantifiable thing that a person can gain more of. So what is luck physically? How do meteoroids get it? How do they pass it to you? Where is it stored? How is it cashed in? Who cashes it in? What other irrational beliefs must we now construct to support this one? Right, And, and keep in mind that the only real way to avoid building this intricate trust work of irrationality is to cordon off this area to inquiry, to refuse to allow ourselves to think critically about it at all. And if we do that, of course, we've lost the ability to even assess whether or not the belief has become harmful. And of course, we also have to examine how we got there. Right. You weren't born believing that shooting stars were good luck. That's a piece of information that was given to you along the way. And in this hypothetical, it's one that you accepted. How? What process did you use to examine this assertion before adopting a belief in it? Now, now I, I honestly, I don't know, you know what that would be, but the one thing I can say about it with certainty is that it's faulty. You're measuring the veracity of the information around you with a broken gauge. How can we say with any confidence that nothing more harmful is going to find its way in along that same path? 
Now, of course, we're never called upon to debunk shooting star belief, right? Because that's not a belief that people have. And debunking that wouldn't be worth a diatribe. But that's not really the irrational belief at the heart of this debate at all, is it? The irrational belief that we're talking about by proxy is deism. And in a sense, that's just another example of an argument disproving itself by existing. Right. Sure. Deism is amongst the least harmful forms of religious belief, but that's only because it makes no real claims. It defines God down to nothing and then emphatically insists that somehow that nothing exists. But even that non-assertion clearly includes a risk of harm. It could stifle curiosity, right? It could fool you into thinking a question had been answered when it wasn't and thereby rob you of an opportunity for discovery. It could inspire and support another person on their way to a much less justified belief. And at the very least, it could leave you feeling the need to defend the concept of having irrational beliefs on Facebook.